But now let's crack this open slowly and see what the hell they have inside here. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this new product. Now, this is from Rush FPV, and it's a complete stack with a unique twist. So they've done something a bit different than usual on their IMU, which is the gyro here. They've suspended it, also gave it its own separate power supply to reduce the chances of any noise. And I can see why. And they've also done this whole new arrangement setup. So what we're going to cover today is we're going to take a look at the overall components here. We will also be discussing my personal experience with the Rush Tank Mini. I've used this quite a lot on a lot of quads. And I'll also be showing you how to set this up correctly if you're going to be building it. So let's get started. PCBWay is one of the leading PCB manufacturers that I even use on a daily basis, not only to do my projects, but also some of the products that I've designed that's currently in the market, like the Drone Mesh V USB. And I'm constantly using them for prototyping, and I'm also using their assembly services, and they also do have flashing services for specific hardware requirements. So it's a really great place to have your PCB manufactured or prototype. So before we get into the components, let's take a look at some of the things they actually provide you with. They give us an XT30. So what the XT30 is actually saying is that this thing should be on micro quadcopters and it's not advised to set this up on a five inch but you could possibly get away with it but just keep that in mind also make sure when installing it you take note of the red one because they have both black wires and they've set up a red heat shrink here for you in order for you to know which one's positive or negative so you don't screw this up as soon as you plug it in so keep that in mind right here next they give us a proper 470 microfarad 35 volt rubicon low esr capacitor however it might be too big for a micro so you can choose any other one that might be smaller maybe a 200 microfarad you should be good this might be a bit too big for a micro right here and this is the esc now we're going to come back to the esc in a bit right here as you can tell it does have some conformal coating onto it which is really nice however what i really want to start off with is the flight controller and also the connectors here. So what they give us is four connectors that are actually meant for the camera, but you can choose which ones you want. For example, here's a small one that's already ready made for you. So that's going to be a very easy setup for you right here. Then you can tell this has a little clip right here in order to keep the whole thing into place. And that's going to go right here. As you can tell, it does have this little latch right there that'll allow it to hold very well and not come off. However, I've personally never had an issue with any of these coming off. But I guess it's a nice little addition of uh, security, if you might say. So they give you two of these connectors, one this big and the other one slightly larger. So in case you needed a long wire to reach to your camera, but that is prepared for you. And the camera actually just goes right here. And that's, you know, that's it for your camera. You're done. However, what you might have also noticed is that they give you these wires here. You might be like, well, what the hell are these wires for? Well, what this is supposed to be for is some cameras have a very long input. So you can even do the on-screen or the OSD control through the remote. But what you can do is you grab this one and you would actually install it into the last part of the camera uh, connector that's going into the flight controller. As you can tell, it's a four pin. So you'd install that there and these two would actually connect your camera. Now, not all cameras are compatible like that, but this is uh, to allow you to control the on-screen display of your camera through the Betaflight OSD, which is really nice, really nice addition here. They give you two of these also. So, you know, if you needed short ones, you have short ones. And if you needed long ones, they also provide you with the long ones. And let's put these to the side here. So this connector right here is going to be for the receiver. And they're both exactly identical, both of these wires. And this one's going to be for the LED. The black is obviously ground. The red is going to be 5 volt and the yellow is going to be the signal for your LED and kind of the same thing that goes here except the yellow is the signal and then obviously the red and the black are going to be power for your receiver. Now this is where it gets interesting and they've actually thought about a couple things. Now if we flip it over, what we see is you can choose between 3.3 volts and 5 volts. It's default on 5 volts. So if you have spectrum, you're going to be able to power it up just fine. However, you're like, okay, well, do I connect S bus or I bus here? Well, you can connect anything S bus, I bus or spectrum because this is an F7 flight controller. So basically that's where your receiver would go. However, there's also a couple things you need to take note of because I think default, the video transmitter will not boot because I think they've made a mistake here. Now, if we flip this over before we get into the gyre, let's just take a look at some of the components they have on the board here. And immediately what we can see is we do have 16 megabyte flash memory. So we have flash memory for our black box, obviously our OSD, and we have our pins. So this whole thing connects via pins also. So the bottom part will connect to the ESC like so, and that completely 
uh, just runs all the connections for you for the ESCs and also power. All you'll need to do is solder the power and the motors and you're done. Now let's take a look at the gyro before I get into the issue with the video transmitter because the issue with the video transmitter is so it's not really an issue but it's more of a mistake because as you can tell you can bridge whether the video transmitter will get battery voltage and or 5 volts. So these video transmitters take battery voltage unless this is a typo here. If you plug it in and it doesn't work then you're gonna have to remove this bridge and bridge the left one with the middle one there and then you'll be able to power up this video transmitter. We also do have a couple UARTs broken out. Now I really don't like the way they've done that. We have an RX5 here and an RX3 here and you know you could use these for your input if you want. Now let's just say you wanted to T something so what you would have to do is basically remove this bridge right here bridge the T with the middle one and then this becomes T2 the yellow wire that's supposed to be for our video transmitter. However if you remove the bridge completely from here you could use the R pad as R2 and the T here as T2. You could or just solder the T right here and you'll have uh, what is it called TX2 but as you can tell there isn't any other TX pad for some reason I don't know why. Um, but yeah, there's RX3 and then we also have an RX5 and this is a bridging point bridge and bridge or selectable area. So it's, um, it's very minimalistic. It's supposed to be a very easy setup process. I think that's the whole idea here, but now let's crack this open slowly and see what the hell they have inside here. So this is, this right here is the backside of a PCB. It's not plastic right there, uh, which is pretty interesting actually. And you can't really see that on pictures. Um, all right. So what we can see is we can see the gyro. This is an MPU 6000 gyro right here and we have its own power supply. So they're, they're giving you giving it its own filtered power supply. You can see the capacitors here. There's quite a lot of capacitors for just the uh, the gyro here. So it's going to be getting an absolute clean signal here. And you can also see that it's soft mounted onto this plastic piece. So if I push like that, you can see how it's going inside and there's foam all on the inside right there. If you see all that foam. So it is kind of like a double soft mounting solution in a way. And these just fit right in there just fine. So I really like the design. I don't know how functional it would be. Obviously it's adding weight, but it is a pretty interesting design here. And I, I really kind of like it. Maybe it could be really, really good. And also another benefit of this is you can switch out to an ICM gyro and or, and or keep the MPU 6000 gyro. I highly recommend you just keep the MPU, but at the end of the day, it's actually up to you. So you decide that. Now the video transmitter again this thing takes battery voltage so if we plug this in and plug the battery and the video transmitter is not booting do not worry it's not the video transmitter's fault it's going to be this right here you should remove the 5 volt and bridge the battery voltage it's very important you do that so it's a good thing I noticed that because um, if I didn't take a really really close look like I usually do when I make the videos then I would not have known that and if uh, somebody were to build it and they don't know this stuff uh, you're just going to have an absolute nightmare of a day. So this is the stack completely put together and it's taking about 18 millimeters of stack height from the bottom to the top here. And that is pretty good actually. It's, it's pretty small compared to some other ones. Obviously there is thinner, but here what you're getting is you're getting an F7 and you're getting a proper video transmitter. Still the ESC and stuff are very uh, new to the market. So I don't know how they're going to perform. However, what you do tend to notice immediately, uh, very little filtration. Also, we have a shunt resistor, so that's good. So we have current, and we also have a baby heatsink around this area, which is kind of designed kind of nicely. And uh, if we take a look here, if we set it up in our quadcopter, this is going to be motor one, two, three, four. So the battery is going to be going to the left. So keep that in mind. And um, there's just so many things here to take note of. It's just insane. And when you plug this in, the, the USB is going to be on the left. And when you plug this guy in, then the MMCX is going to be on the left. Sorry, the USB is going to be on the right and this is going to be on the left. So you're just going to have to, you know, figure yourself out when you're putting this together here. And again, I highly recommend you add the low ESR capacitor. And if you don't know how to do that, you see this minus right here. That's going to go this. Hold on, let's open it like that. So this is the negative side or the ground side. That'll connect right there on that. That's where you want that to be soldered. And the side that has nothing will go on the positive. And um, also make sure you take note of your XT30 since they're both black wires. So the red one here should go to the positive, which would solder right there. And the black one from here is going to be a negative. And I highly recommend you shorten this out because you reduce noise in the overall system and you're gonna need that. And also something else to take note of, it is a 20 by 20 mounting hole solution and the holes are M2. So they're two millimeter holes 
for this stat keep that in mind and they also provide us with the hardware in order to set this up inside a quadcopter these are metal screws which is really great because usually plastic ones would break and then you could ruin the pins so also take into consideration this is a pin setup some people don't like pin setup and some people do personally i don't mind either one as long as it works and it functions great and uh, you just got to be really careful with these pins when you're placing them in as you can tell i had didn't place it in right the first time so yeah so keep that in mind and make sure you place them in correctly and for this one we have really big fat pins right here we have the typical uh pin headers here that'll just go right in it's a really nice stack overall and uh, i wish it was using bigger fets but other than that it looks pretty good pretty promising it's rocking an f7 and it has an all new layout for the gyro so it might be very good for some super noisy quadcopter um, in terms of vibrations and uh, should give you hopefully a good flying quadcopter we'll be testing this very soon everything's linked down below i'll try to get you guys coupons and let me know what you guys think down in the comment section come join my patreon i have one of these up for giveaway and also some more rush fpv vtx's and also some uh ultimate vtx's so come join my patreon ton of giveaways and i'll see you in the next one peace out guys